Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Thick Slices and Deep Cuts. Uh, tonight, the first album ranking in the new studio here. Um, and tonight I'm going to kick it off with a, uh, a classic, legendary Dutch, purely death metal band. One of the originals. Uh, we're talking about Asphyx uh, with probably my favorite death metal vocalist of all time, uh, Martin Van Drunen. Um, how to describe them? They are just purely classic, old school death metal uh, with with tons of doom as well, but just raw, uh, the tortured vocals of uh, Mr. Van Drunen. He is the best. Um, let's see, they originated all the way back in 1987, uh, the drummer Bob Bacchus. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the first lineup was, but basically their first real lineup uh, uh, was with Eric Daniels on guitar and with Theo Lumens on uh, vocals and bass. And they were basically a trio for the longest time. They kind of have two halves of their career. Uh, what they did from the beginning up until about 2000. Then they were on hiatus for a while and they've since come back. Um, but uh, the, you know, the, the first lineup uh, was that was that trio and then they uh, they brought in Martin Van Druden for their first official release. And uh, that was, in my opinion, that was the classic lineup. Um, and then they've, uh, they've since had some lineup changes along the way. Uh, which I'll get to all of that, but uh, as far as how many phases this band has, I'm not really sure. I mean, they had that early classic uh, phase with the classic lineup, and then they went through some lineup changes, and so I guess you could call that all its own little phase, and ever since they've kind of reformed uh, and put out four more albums, this is they're still kind of in this current phase that they're in right now. So um, they have nine albums. Uh, some people would say they have ten, and I'm not going to rank uh, Embrace the Death. So Embrace the Death was an album that they did with Theo Lumens on bass and vocals in 1990 for a label that went defunct, and so that album was never properly released in its time. And half of those songs had been re-recorded on those early albums. And then in listening to Embrace the Death more, songs that have different song titles just ended up, they, they re-recorded them with different vocals or with different lyrics on uh, their first album. So almost everything from Embrace the Death has been re-recorded on those first few albums um, and done better. So I don't, I'm not going to rank Embrace the Death. It's really just a glorified demo. Um, uh, also, I'm not going to rank. Uh, it's a cool EP, but I don't rank EPs. But Crush the Cenotaph came out in '91, uh, so that was a classic. Uh, even though it's a short, short EP, that's classic too. Um, so I'm going to focus on just the other nine studio albums. Um, not a bad studio album, not a bad album here. So whatever I rank, um, I, I knew my bottom two, and I knew my top three, four. I really knew my top three, I knew my top four, I knew my bottom two. So seven, six, and five, when we get to that, I mean, there's nothing really separating those. So whatever is at seven could be five and vice versa. So, but I, I kind of knew the bottom two, although the bottom two aren't bad at all. And then they have several classics. Uh, up towards the top, so uh, we'll just get right into it. All right, um, I don't own physical copies of all nine, so the bottom three are all the three that I don't have physical copies of. Uh, but at number uh, at number nine, I'm going to go with uh, an album that they put out in 1996 called uh, God Cries. Uh, the reason I'm putting this one number nine, um, it's just it it's the biggest departure from the Asphyx sound. Um, it doesn't, there's no doom on it. It's 31 minutes long. So you, I think it's nine songs, 31 minutes. So it's a quick, fast, uh, fast album. There's no doom on here. And also, um, I think they had a third guitar player credited, but apparently Theo Lumens comes back in the band. So he was with the band uh, on that first album that never really saw the light of day until years later. But he comes back into the band here after uh, Martin Van Druden has been gone, and they've actually gone through another uh, lineup even after that. So it's just basically Theo Lumens and Bob Bacchus on drums. And they do this really fast album, 39 songs, 31 minutes. Everything's just like two minutes, two minutes. A couple of songs are a little longer. Um, but Theo doesn't sound like, you know, he doesn't sound like Martin Van Druden or, you know, so he's coming in with a different approach. Plus, if you know anything about 1996, 96 was the beginning of just this dark time for death metal. 96, 97, 98, even 99. That was just a really 
tough times, so death metal bands were trying different things with their sound. And I think that's what Asphyx was doing here. They were trying to speed up the pace, no more doom, uh, and dare I say, super melodic parts. Uh, the title track is a, is a, is a barn burner. Uh, might be Love and Enemy might be my favorite track out here, but it doesn't sound like a Sphix at all. It's like all melodic and catchy and got these cool, you know, this cool hook. And Theo Lumen sings a bit different. He sings well. It just it just sounds this sounds the least a Sphix like, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a real departure and it's also a really short album. Um, and I don't remember much of the, the music, but like I said, the title track to start it is excellent. And my beloved enemy is the one that I remember, but just because it was so melodic and you'll never hear us fix do a song with those types of riffs so uh but that's coming in at number nine god cries it's still it's a decent album there's nothing no shame in that album that they put out in 96 and again i i understand in 1996 a lot of these bands were going through a real uh tough time trying to figure out you know what was going to work uh, but uh, so there you go number nine i have god cries from 1996 um and then coming in at number eight um, this is probably the most obscure album of their entire collection. Um, I've got, uh, from 2000, I have On the Wings of Inferno. Uh, so, Eric Daniels, the mainstay in the band, was gone for the God Cries uh, sessions. Well, he comes back in uh, with Bob Bacchus, uh, but this time uh, there's, no, there's still no Martin Van Drunen on vocals. There's no Theo Lumens anymore, he's gone too. Um, and you bring in, and I might butcher his name, is it Vanus Gubbles? Anyway, they bring in this German guy who does vocals and bass. He kind of sounds like Martin Van Druen a little bit. He's got a little bit of that, that drier, tortured uh, vocal. So he fits in pretty well. Uh, and if you thought God Cries was short at nine songs, 31 minutes, this, song, this album is nine songs, 29 minutes. Nine songs, 29 minutes. Everything's, you know, two and a half to three minutes. It rips through. Um, it sounds good. It sounds a little bit. Uh, it sounds a little more like it's fixed, but again, with no none of the doom, none of the doom. It's just a, it's it's you know more more blitzing. Which, by the way, is fixed is absolutely known for their slower, doomier, heavier stuff. But they will throw down as fast as anyone when they need to. And they they always do. So that's really why I love it's fixed. They can give you both. They can just you know last away with the death thrash, but they can drop in all that doom. Well, this album has no doom. Um, I guess the best song is probably the first track, which is also the long one. It's over five minutes long, Summoning the Beast. Um, uh, the second track starts off with a sample. Um, it might be Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it's like uh, the saw is family. Uh, it's called The Synth of Obscurity, and that title pretty much sums up this album. This is the most obscure fix album. Uh, title track's really good, too. Um, I think the reason this one's eight, just like God Cries is nine, it's probably the most, the furthest from the typical Asphyx sound I'm looking for. It's also got a strange lineup um, in both occasions, and also these albums are really short, but uh, they're still cool. They're still cool, and that's why I'm ranking Asphyx here, because you got a death metal band with nine excellent albums worth reviewing. So coming in at number eight uh, from 2000, uh, their last one with Eric Daniels on guitar, uh, I uh, have On the Wings of Inferno. Um, and so here we go. Coming in at number seven, I really dig, I dig all these albums. I really dig these final seven, and it's a crying shame I don't have a physical copy of this. And it was also painful to put it at seven, because I could have moved it as high as fifth and sixth. But I've got, uh, from 2009, I have Death, The Brutal Way. So this was the beginning of the second half of their career that they're in. So there was this long hiatus. They reformed. New lineup, Martin Van Drunen is back, but now instead of being a, a three-piece as they were all those years before, they're now a four-piece. Martin Van Drunen is back on vocals. Thank God, I love him. Uh, you've got uh, Bob Bacchus still on drums. You you keep uh, Vonna Scubbles, who is your vocalist bass player on On the Wings of Inferno. He comes back, but just as a bass player and provides some backing vocals. Um, but the key guy here now is Paul Bayes as your guitar player. And he's great. He's great. He just assumes the role that Eric Daniels held for so long. So this current incarnation of, of Asphyx maintains that classic Asphyx sound, but moves things forward a little bit. Um, 
we're listening to Scorbutics right now. And this is off, this is the lead off track from that. And this is what I'm talking about. With Asphyx, they're maintaining the classic Asphyx sound, but they're bringing something new to the table. Some sort of a new energy or groove or a new kind of heaviness. Uh, but uh, just a big fan of this album. Like I said, I something, it wasn't that I picked this seventh, it's, that it's just that I picked other things and this kind of found its way down to seven. Um, but man, this also, they really, uh, I, I call this like reestablishing the brand when bands come back after a long hiatus or, you know, after some strange albums and then a long hiatus, such as High Cries and All the Wings of a Throne, and then a long break. They're reestablishing the brand, but they're bringing something new to the table, but they're definitely doing things to harken back to the first couple of albums. Uh, and the Herald is another awesome track. It's number two, and there are moments in that, that break down in that that have that doom and that. Paul Baines is channeling his uh, inner Eric Daniels on some of the simple, sorrowful, cool solos. Uh, man, the, the other track I can't pronounce it. It's either Dutch or German. Ibrun on Morser, awesome song. The title track is a is a ripper. Uh, Asphyx Two, they they died as they marched is awesome. Uh, Cape Horn, probably the longest song I think on the album. That one's really cool. This just is a classic Asphyx album in that the songs, you get a two and a half minute song, then you get a six and a half minute song. You've got just super intense songs followed by completely doomy things. And then a song like Score Beauty, which is just an absolute classic, which is somewhere in between all of that. Um, so it hurts to rank it seven because I love the album, but uh, something something had to come in at number seven. So uh, at number seven, I've got uh, their sixth sixth album uh, from 2009, uh, and the first one after a long break. The first one with Martin Van Drunen and, and this awesome classic lineup uh, back together. Uh, yeah, got the brutal way coming in at number seven. Uh, okay. So uh, at number six, you know, and again, five, six, seven, these could have gone anywhere. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, from 2016, I'm going to go with uh, Incoming Death. Um, this is the first one, well, it's not technically the first one, but Bob Bach has uh, officially stepped away from the band at this point. So they bring in Stefan Huskins on drums. They don't miss a beat. He sounds, you don't even know Bob Bach is going. Stefan Huskins fits right in and maintains the uh, these fixed kind of bludgeoning barbaric rhythms. Uh, in fact, we're listening to a song from that right now, The Flood. Uh, yeah, this album is awesome. This is just classic, traditional, this is typical of Spix right here. Um, uh, also on this album, I, I can't pronounce his name, Arwen Zul. Uh, anyway, they have a bass player that's been with them for the last three albums. He's been with them for about 10 years now. But uh, just a really good lineup. This is the Paul Bayes era with Martin Van Drunen on vocals. Uh, just, you know, what, what are the songs? You know, Kandaroo, Division Brandenburg. I think Wardroid is great. Uh, the Feeder. Uh, actually, this song is not from Incoming Dust. It's from another album that we'll get to later. But uh, they all sound fairly similar at this stage. But, uh, you know, Wardroid is classic. The Feeder has just the most brutal breakdown you're ever going to hear. Love it. It makes me want to just flip the kitchen table or something. Um, uh, also... Uh, the Grand Denial is really good. Incoming Death, title track. Forerunners of the Apocalypse is probably my favorite song on here. Um, you know, and then Wildland Fire has got good uh, aggressive energy. And then Death, the Only Immortal is awesome. Mine has a couple of covers, a winter cover and a master cover. So they're bringing in some old school, uh, you know, death, death fresh. So this is really a good album. I mean... I don't know if it's better than Death the Brutal Way. I was just counting up the tracks, and I think when I counted up Death the Brutal Way, I counted six of ten that I really liked, and uh, a couple of like instant classics. This one has at least a couple of instant classics as well, but I think I like War Droid, you know, The Fear, The Grand Denial, Incoming Death, Forerunners of the Apocalypse, Wildland Fire, and Death the Only Immortal. That's like seven of the eleven. So, you know, this is coming in at six, but it's just another awesome, awesome uh, offering from the band. So uh, so there you go, coming in at, uh, at number six uh, for 2016, uh, uh, Incoming Death. Uh, 
Okay, coming in at number five, this one, um, you know, I think I mentioned that God Christ was kind of a, a, an anomaly in the East Fix collection, and All the Wings of Inferno was even shorter and had a unique lineup. Well, this album uh, has a unique lineup, too. This was their, uh, coming in at number five, their third album, uh, self-titled from 94, uh, As Fix. You still have Eric Daniels here, and he's maintaining the As Fix sound, but you've got uh, Ron Van Pohl on bass and vocals. Uh, his, well, I think he provided some studio help on a previous album, but basically his first official uh, album with the band. And also, uh, you've got Sander Van Hook on drums. Uh, uh, he's a really good drummer. You know, I think with this fix, you don't want the music to be too polished. You know, you don't you don't need uh, hired gun hotshot instruments. You know, instrumentals. You want it raw. But Sander Van Hook sounds like a hired gun. He sounds like he's you know he's probably doing the most fills and doing the most technical drumming you're ever going to hear on this fix album. Uh, also, this is their longest album, 10 songs, just about 60 minutes. So 10 songs, about an hour. And because it's an hour long, they this is their doomiest album. There's so much doom on here. But there's a lot of uh, just aggressiveness, too, because it's 60 minutes. So you probably got 30 to 35 minutes of just doom, and then the other 25 or 30 minutes of, of uh, you know, up-tempo, uh, um -tempo, you know, thrashing it. So it's just, this album is awesome in that it's the only one like it. It's the doobiest, but it's the longest. It provides plenty of uh, aggressiveness. Um, I mean, the opening track is the intro, and it's almost four minutes long. And it's kind of slow to mid pace with some spoken words. And you go right into a heavy one, Depths of Eternity, which is aggressive. But it's seven minutes long. And that's because it breaks down to these awesome doom sections. And uh, as a guitar player, uh, the... The slow, doomy riffs, I think it's in about 5 minutes and 50 seconds to the end. These fourth chords that they find, I mean, they're the, the I mean, they find some of the coolest chords on this, uh, on that song towards the end. Uh, you know, Emperors of Salvation has this, like, church cathedral bell. This album is, like, ghostly. It's just, it's just, like, funereal, funeral. It just sounds like some of the stuff on here is just kind of like like this holy death sound it's kind of creepy and, uh, you know uh, initi initiation into the ossuary is almost 10 minutes long and it's my favorite track on the album and it starts off with like this Gregorian chant like this monk chant it sounds all like Latin and again it just this album feels very like medieval and holy deathly and just like you're in a cathedral or something like that. It's just got this cool vibe on this album. You're just not going to find uh, anywhere else. You know, this is my favorite. This is obviously my favorite non-Martin Van Drunen uh, album. Uh, it's, they did three in a row in the middle of their career without uh, Martin on vocals, and this is by far my favorite of those three. Uh, Abomination Echoes is a, a shorter uh, instrumental. Back into Eternity. Now, I don't know if there's a concept here because the last track is Thoughts of an, Athe an Atheist, which is something they did back in the demo days. Um, they bring it here, but you've got a song Depths of Eternity and you have a song Back into Eternity. And I, so I'm thinking there's like a lyrical theme here. And the songs have this, like, you know, this song is cool because in the uh, choruses you have these whispers of these ghosts and these souls trying to pull whoever the, the main character is, like, you know back into their realm and out of this living world so it's just like it's a, kind of a eerie uh, album to go with the brutality my only knock on this album is i'm not a big fan of ron van pool's vocals it, it's, he's my least favorite it's my least favorite vocal performance of all their albums but i think you kind of get used to his voice after a few minutes you know before depths of eternity is even over i'm kind of used to his voice at that point and uh again lots of awesome tracks on here you know Valleys in Oblivion. Look at these song lengths. Seven minutes, 459, you know, 617, 949, 501, 243, 643, 715, and it finishes with uh, 523. So just their longest, their doomiest, but still heavy and aggressive. And I just love the ghostly, spirited, the, the dark spirit kind of vibe. And the fact that you feel like, uh, you know, you're, you're like in a church, a big cathedral, a giant cathedral or something. 
this is uh, the feeder from uh, Incoming Gun, the world that uh, But uh, there you go, coming in at number five, the self-titled uh, album from 1994. Um, okay, coming in at number four, I've been listening to this nonstop for about the last two or three weeks. Uh, I've got their most recent one here from 2021. I've got Necrosaurus. This album's awesome. It's so uh, asphyx, but it's so, like, dare I say, uh, sophisticated a little. Uh, the Soul Curious Death opens it up uh, in classic asphyx fashion. They, they, you know, they pedal to the metal to start the album. Molten Black Earth is total bolt thrower. It's a total bolt thrower song. Um, and Martin's tortured vocals even smooth out a little bit. He sounds a little bit like Carl Willis, which is cool because apparently he was in Bolt Thrower for a split second back in the 90s. Uh, then something happened and he lost all his hair. And so he kind of went went away until his hair came back. And when he came back, it's all silver now and he looks pretty cool. But uh, so Molt Black Earth, there's a lot of a Bolt Thrower vibe on this album. Uh, Mount Skull is cool. Uh, Knight's Templar Stand is one of my favorites on here. Just really catchy, mid-paced, kind of bolt thrower-ish. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking a little, they're channeling their bolt thrower. Three Years of Famine is the doomy one. It's probably the doomiest one on here, right in the middle of the album. Botox Implosion is uh, aggressive and sort of a, uh, I haven't read the lyrics, but Botox Implosion is the one title that sort of stands out uh, amidst all the other, like, doomier uh, titles. In Blazing Oceans is excellent. The Nameless Elite might be my other favorite track on here. Yield or Die is great. Uh, the title track, Necrosaurus, I think is the longest one at over seven minutes. Again, uh, ten songs, fifty minutes, so you're getting good, good doom. You can just, when you when you hear that it's fixed as an album, it's ten songs, fifty minutes, you know it's going to be, there's, they're going to save plenty of space for doom. And so you just get it all. You get, you get your blitzing songs, you know, your shorter blitzing songs, you get your longer seven minute doomy ones, and then you get all these nice like bolt thrower-ish ones, and this is just a really, I wanted to rank this third, but I was like, I can't do that, it just came out, but it's just, everything's really memorable, uh, everything's catchy, like I can't believe, I'm going to say this, but a lot of these fix albums, a lot of their stuff is just catchy, it's so simple, there's nothing they're doing on the guitars that's, you know, mind bending or anything like that, but it works. And they shouldn't mess with that formula. And they should. And I never want to hear us fix with a super polished production. I never want to hear them do a click track. I saw some other review, and the guy was like, "Yeah, the drummer's kind of sloppy. He speeds up and slows down a little bit. His drum fills aren't perfect." And I'm thinking that's by design. And that's why I love listening to us fix. I love bands that sound like that because everybody now just plays to the grid, and everything's just too, too sterilized now. And us fix just keeps everything real meaty and real, and uh, I love it. And this album is just awesome. Oh, by the way, more hard work by Axel Herman. He's done every album cover except Death the Brutal Way. And Axel Herman, from the from the very beginning all the way to 2021 later. But I love this album. This is probably their most bolt thrower album, but it's awesome. It's got plenty of doom and plenty of blitzing songs, too. Or at least enough blitzing songs, like the opening track and Botox Implosion and a few others have those moments, but uh, just classic aspects. Um, so there you go. Number four, I've got Necrosaurus from uh, from this year, from 2021. All right, here we go. Uh, number three. Man. Number three, I've got their second album from 1992. I have Last One on Earth. Look at that awesome Axel Herman album cover. Um, I think uh, my friend Jason Barron, I think he said this is his favorite album from them. I don't disagree. You know, I don't disagree with that. This is an awesome album. Uh, the Crusher. Uh, there was a version of The Crusher on an EP the year before, uh, Crush the Sin on Tap EP, which, by the way, the bonus tracks on my version, the bonus tracks are the uh, Crush the Sin on Tap EP, which is pretty awesome. Uh, because that contains Rite of Shades and another version of The Crusher, as well as the song Crush the Sin on Tap. Anyway, uh, MS Bismarck starts at The Crusher, Serenade and Lead. Uh, Last One on Earth is one of my favorite songs they've ever done. The Crusher's excellent. These are like, you know, if you said, oh, greatest hits, you know, you got an 80-minute CD, you want to fill up a switch stuff. I mean, they've got tons of those tracks on this album. The Crusher, Last One on Earth, The Incarnation of Lust. I think my favorite track on here, even though it's shorter, is Streams of Ancient Wisdom. I love that song. Uh, Food for the Ignorant just starts off as this thrashing one, and then it breaks down into this slow, heavy, doomy thing, and they put an effect on the guitars that just nukes your speakers. 
Well, that. Uh, and then a Sphinx, uh, Forgotten War to end it is another cool. Uh, I mean, I guess it's doomy and slow, but the guitars are picking real fast. Uh, reminds me of that uh, the Metal Church song, Metal Church, where they had the slow beat, but they were picking fast. Well, you know, that was just early thrash metal. This is death metal. They're super speed picking over slow riffs. I love it when they do that, the super speed picking over the slower riffs. So I just think this is a, a classic. And, uh, I haven't gotten to it yet, but I think the epitome of this fix, and I love what they're doing more recently, but the epitome of this fix can be found in their first two albums for sure. So to me, this is just the way it's fixed. This is just classic it's fixed right here. So there you go, coming in at uh, uh, at number three, uh, their second uh, album from 1992, I Have Last One on Earth. Every song is cool, and there are at least half of these are just all-time all classics. Uh, so there you go. So now we're down to the final two, and Man, if you'd asked me this a few years ago, this would be my number one, because everything on this is classic. But coming in at number two, I have their debut from 1991. I have The Rack. Um, I probably heard this for the first time in 90, maybe 92. But man, I was just a huge fan. And then later in 92, they put out their second classic album. So I was a biggest fixed fan pretty much out of the gate. Again, super raw. This album is super raw. But that's, I think it's fixed sounds better when they keep it pretty raw, or at least keep it pretty loose. Uh, but, you know, as a guitar player, the thing I love about them, uh, you know, Mark Van Druen is great. But the guitars, you know, and Paul Bands carries it on to this day, but Eric Daniels, just the guitar crunch, just just the meaniness of the guitar when they hit those fourth chords, it just, man. So I'm just, I'm hooked. Some people criticize, like, well, the riffs are kind of bone basic. I'm like, well, this fix is a bone basic band. They're old school, but it works. And it works too because that guitar sound is just so brutal. Uh, but you've got this intro, the quest for absurdity, and then vermin and diabolical resistance and evocation and wasteland of terror and the sickening dwell. And then Ode to a Nameless Grave is this cool instrumental with this sad, sorrowful, uh, simple uh, guitar lead that goes into Pages of Blood, which continues the sad, sorrowful guitar lead. It's so heavy. And then the rack is the big, long, epic one that's real memorable. So I'm just, uh, and the rack is nine minutes. So you got shorts, you know, you got two minute songs and, you know, you got some short barn burners, but man, they still, they still get doomy on this too. And I love how they can, Classic is fixed knows how to just blitz and then shift gears and go into doom. I love it when they do that. So uh, this album is just an absolute classic. I love it. Um, you know, uh, so coming in at number two, but it's really a number one. And these top three and possibly these top four are all number one. It's just uh, an absolute classic I've got from 1991. By the way, 1991 is my favorite year for death metal. And this album is right in the heart of it. So there you go. Uh, uh, coming in at number two, their debut from 1991, uh, The Rack. So there can be only one at number one. Um, man, I've, I've been a huge fan of this now for uh, for a long time, but uh, I don't know if this was the their seventh album. But coming in at number one from 2012, uh, The Mighty Death Hammer. Death Hammer, I love this album. Uh, every, it's just the, again, much like the rack and last one on earth and their new one, they just know how to mix up the blitzing and the dooming uh, with that mighty, just chunky guitar sound and Martin's incredible vocals. And there's that classic, there's a classic line of Bob Bacchus' last uh, studio album with the band. Uh, but uh, just, uh, I'm, I'm really digging everything that the band has been doing since they reformed with Paul Baines as the, as the main, you know, as the guitar player and Martin back on board. Into the Time Waste. Uh, Death Hammer's a fast two and a half minute song, but then you shift gears after two blitzers, you go into Minefield, which is over seven minutes, and it's just awesome, doomy stuff. Uh, then you go back into Up Days When Blades Turn Blunt, which is another fast one. So you get your first four tracks, three are blitzers and one's a doomy one, but then Der Lanzer is almost seven minutes long, and that's a doomy one. I love that one. But then Reign of the Brutes, another fast one. But And the flood is fast and like grooving. But then we doom you to death is exactly as it's labeled, and that's almost seven minutes. Vespa 
Crab Row is probably my favorite song on the album just because it's so freaking uh, infectiously catchy. Uh, and then you finish it with As the Magma Mammoth Rises, another Doom. So you've got like one, two. You got like of the of the ten tracks, four of them are Doomy as hell. And the other six are either blitzy thrash or just super heavy, like moshing groove. Uh, it's just got a perfect balance of everything. Yeah, I think four of them are thrashers, four of them are doomers, and two of them are just total grooving, moshing ones. So to me, this is a perfect album. And I, I, you know, I love the rack and Last One on Earth. And I, I just, you know, and I love the brand new one too. But this one to me is just like, man, this album is just awesome all the way through. Uh, so coming in at number one. So there you go. Uh, Death Hammer. So real quick to recap, uh, don't have the 987, but at number nine I've got from 96, I've got God Cries. Uh, number eight, I've got from 2000, All the Leagues of Inferno. Uh, number seven, I have from 2009, I've got The Brutal Way. Um, and then at number six, uh, I've got uh, from 2016, I've got Incoming Death. Uh, number five, I've got uh, from 1994, their third album, self-titled, and six. Uh, at number four, I have their brand new album from 2021, The Crossroads. Um, at number three, their second album from 92, I've got Last One on Earth. Uh, at number two, their first album from 91, The Rack. Uh, and then at number one, I have uh, their, I don't know, their seventh album from 2012, uh, Death Hammer. By the way, all their albums released on Century Media, whether it's 1991 or 2021. Everything's been released on Century Media. That's kind of hard to pull off these days, especially in that genre. But uh, uh, so there you go. That pretty much covers um, the catalog of the Six. Like I said, they're one of the first bands I think they formed all the way back in '87. They were basically a trio for the longest time. Uh, they had that early classic era, but they kind of kept moving along and putting out albums with slightly different lineups throughout the '90s and up to 2000. Kind of went on hiatus for a while, and now they're in the, the second half of their career where they're just everything they do is excellent. So, um, but there you have it. That is ranking the albums of legendary, awesome Dutch death metal band, uh, Smix. Um, so, there you go. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you next time.